you can use static routes for a lot of things. If you have a particular way you want traffic to go, static routes are the way to go. Let's say, for example, you have a, a primary internet connection and you have a backup internet connection. You want to test how much bandwidth you can push to that backup internet connection. Well, unfortunately, if you're using a regular dynamic routing protocol, it's going to recognize that your primary connection is going to be a heck of a lot faster. So none of the traffic is going to go down through that secondary. But if you go in and you set up a static route, just for testing purposes, you can say, I want any traffic going to this particular subnet to use this particular gateway. And it will force all the traffic through there so you can check your latency and your bandwidth and your delay and network saturation and all that other stuff. As Mike talked about, you can use a route add command. So we're going to go out and I'll fire off the command prompt. And I'm going to type R-O-U-T-E and then a slash question mark. And it shows you all the different things that you can do. So for example, if I wanted to do a route add, and here we're showing it in IPv6, what you'd do is you'd put in, hey, this is the network that we're looking for, and this is where we send it out to. Now, um, you can also do all sorts of other things. You can do a route change. You can do a route delete. But when you're doing the routing tables, one of the things that Mike mentioned was the hyphen P. What hyphen P does is it says, instead of just storing this route entry into memory, why not store it in the registry? That way, if the machine reboots, you have a power loss, some reason, it'll still persist because nothing stinks worse than a power cycle and all of a sudden your carefully crafted route commands all go away. Now this is through the command line. It works out fairly well. You can script it, but you can also do it through the RS console. Inside the RS console, you can go in and you can say, I want to create a brand new static route and they show you over on page 270 um, exercise 5.4 on how to be able to go through and do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into our network interfaces and I am going to go in my local area connection. Actually, let me drop it down here. We have our static routes and I'm going to right click. I'm going to say new static route and it's going to ask us which interface we want to use. Now we can do this with our VPN interface, dial on demand interface, but in this case, I'm going to select the local area connection. Then I'm going to identify the particular network, and I'm going to say 10.2.0.0. And then we have the net mask. This net mask is not a subnet mask in how you set up your IP properties. You know, oh, this is the network portion, this is the host portion. What we're doing is we're identifying what address of the destination packet has to match in order to hit this route. And we want it to match the first two octets. So I'm going to say 255. 255.255.0.0. Now we could have a regular subnet mask of 2.5.2.5.2.5.0 or 2.5.2.5.2.40.0 in that destination subnet. But what we're just saying is if the destination has 10 and 2 in the first two octets, we want it to go there. Then we're going to identify our gateway. Now this gateway has to be something that you can reach. You're pointing it to the next hop router or the next router, whichever one that you want to look at. And it has to be local to you because what you're doing is you're going to ARP for that MAC address. You're going to take this packet, still address the ultimate destination, but you're going to address it to the MAC address of the router on the next hop. It'll absorb it through layer two, take it to layer three, say, hey, is this my IP address? No, it's not. Am I a router? Yes, I am. Do I know how to get to this next hop? Yes, and it'll either send it to the next router if it's directly connected, drop it off. So we're going to say 172.16.2.35. And that would be a special router just for this particular connection. Then, of course, we can have a metric. And remember, metrics are golf scores. If I have multiple ways to get to the same location, well, that's what I'm going to take. Now, also remember, we had that quad zero entry. Quad zero means the destination is 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0, 0, .0, and the network mask was 0, .0, .0, .0, which said, hey, match anything. And in that case, it may even have a smaller metric than what we've set up. But here's an interesting thing about routing. If I set up a routing entry that is more specific than another routing entry, for example, I say 10.2.3.something, whereas another routing entry says 10.2.something.something, .2 .2 the 10.2.3 is more specific. And as long as I match that particular address, that's the one that I'm going to use. The only time that the metric comes into play is if I have two routes that match identically, in other words, it's the same link that goes to the same network, then I use the cost to determine which one I'm going to use. So I'll say OK. And now anything going to 10.2 is going to be sent to the router of 
.2.35, and if you want to go in and change it, you can go in and change it. Uh, you also have the ability to just simply delete it if you no longer want that particular route.